Hi, in this video we're going to talk about some random variable basics. This is the first video in the, uh, in the module on uh, univariate, what's called univariate random variables. Uh, okay, so let's get into some basics of random variables. First thing I want to talk about is some terminology and what variable, you know, what I mean by variables. Um, the reason I want to do this is because I've heard even teachers use the wrong terminology and it can get kind of confusing and and uh, as I've already mentioned many times that if you know math is a lot easier if we use the right terminology and the right notation so let's let's try to work on that okay so if I see something like this this is an equation if I see an equation like that a lot of times I hear somebody say that that X is a variable well that's that's not true at all the X is not a variable the X in this in for this particular example in that equation the X is called an unknown and of course it doesn't take much to to figure out what X is you subtract 4 and divide by 2 and then you get X equals 3 and so it's no longer an unknown it's a known uh, so so the X is not a variable in a in a in an equation like that However, if I have an equation that looks like this, where y equals a 2x plus 4, then I do think of x as being a variable. It's not a specific value, but it can be a, a, a range of values, so it can vary. That's what I mean by a variable. And in fact, the way that I have this written right now, uh, the x is, I would think of the x as the independent variable. The way I have the equation written right now is because, and I'm thinking of, you know, give me give me any x value. Let the x be independent. Give me x, any x value. And I've written this equation as y being dependent on that x. You you give me an x value, and I'll give you what the y value is. And the y value is going to depend on what the x value is that you give me. And it's just the way that I have the equation written this way. I'm thinking of x as being the independent variable, and I'll call y the dependent variable. Y can be a range of values also. It's not a specific unknown value it's a range of values so those are variables now if I took the first equation I solve for X then it's not hard to see that I, I would solve for X I hope I made I didn't do anything fool, silly on that but uh, I, I get that X is equal to 0.5 y minus 2 so written this way I'm thinking of y as being the independent variable and X as being the dependent variable but again that's what variables are they can they can be any they can be a value in any range, a range of values. They're not a specific unknown value, but a range of values. So now what about random variables? Well, first of all, a random variable is a variable. And it, it's a variable, though, that represents the outcome from an event. So let's look at some examples. So uh, our first example, let's let cap n be the random variable representing. And all of our, all of our random variables represent something. We're, we're very... Uh, this is a very applied subject area, and so we're not doing things theoretically. It was very applied. So, uh, and what I mean by that is that all of our random variables represent something, and so I'll, instead of write, writing out every time random variable representing, I'm going to abbreviate, abbreviate that with RVR. So it's a random variable representing. So capital N in this case, let's let capital N be the random variable representing the number of members of a four-member family who will get COVID within the next year. So now what are the possible outcomes of cap N? Cap, and and the, the, the N there is a capital N, so I'm going to say cap, cap N abbreviating the word capital. Well, you have four-member family, and you're counting the number of members that that, that would get COVID within the next year. So cap N could be either a zero or a one or a two or a three or a four. And, the, and what we call that, the possible outcomes of, of the random variable cap N, we call that the support of cap N. And sometimes I'll abbreviate that, or I'll, most often we'll abbreviate that with, a, with the SUPP. So that's the support of cap N. Now notice I was able to list out the values of cap n. That's what me, that, and and by being able to list out the values, we say that cap n is a discrete random variable. So cap n is uh, denoting the random variable. Now uh, again, I kind of want to be a stickler on on some notation and terminology here. We're going to use capital letters to denote the random variable, and then a lowercase letter. So so this time n. And when I say N, I just mean the lowercase N. When I mean the capital letter N, I'll say cap N. So N denotes a specific value of the random variable, what's called a realization of the random variable. So when you see a statement or write a statement down that says N equals 3, what do I mean by that? Well, I mean that, uh, that, that N equal 3, N equal 3 denotes the observed value of the random variable. 
In other words, I saw that there were three family members that got COVID that year, in, in that year. So it's, a, it's kind of an after the fact statement. So when I see a lowercase n equal three, n is a value, I see, oh, the value of the random variable was three. I'm thinking that as an after fact uh, statement. Whereas I see a cap n equal three, that's gonna denote the event that the random variable is, is equal to three. And, and so that's kind of a before the fact statement. Before the year has, has, has occurred, cap n equal three is, well, that's the event that the uh, random variable equals three. I know that that can kind of get confusing, but once you catch on to this, it, you know, it, it may, uh, you may avoid some, some confusion later if you'll, if you'll stick with me here and, and, and understand the difference between uh, the random variable and a value of the random variable. So, uh, for example, sometimes you might, you know, if I saw a probability like this, you're, you're not going to see a probability like that on an exam, but if I see a probability that n equals 3, well, n equals 3 means that I observed three people that got COVID during that year. So, uh, what's the probability that there are three, that three family members got COVID? Well, uh, that, that it's after the fact. So that probability is going to be a zero if it didn't happen. If there were zero, one, two, or four members of the family that got COVID during the year, then the probability n equals three is zero. If there were three members that got COVID during the year, the probability n equals three is one. However, if I look at the probability that cap n equals three, then I'm looking at what's the probability of the event that three people will get COVID in the next year. I don't know uh, how many people that's you know, the, this is an event then, that, uh, a before the fact event. And so the prob when I see a probability that cap n equals three, again, that's before the fact, that's a, a before the fact statement. And that's just gonna denote the probability that the random variable is gonna be equal to three. And there's a shorthand notation for that. We just write a p sub three. So, um, so generally, uh, the probability that the random variable capital N is equal to N is a piece of N. And a lot of times to avoid confusing using the same letter, we'll just use like a K instead of an N there. And we'll, we'll write the probability that cap N equals K is equal to P sub K. Okay, so that's an example of a discrete random variable uh, because I was able to list out the values in the support of the random variable. And so random variables can be categorized as either discrete or continuous. So now we're going to look at a, a second example. Um, uh, let's look at, uh, let's let capital X equal the be the random variable representing the maximum wind speed in miles per hour of the next category five hurricane that makes landfall in the state of Florida. That's a mouthful, but you'll be interested in this sort of stuff if you become a, uh, a property and casualty actuary, and, and specifically if you do some homeowner's insurance. You'll, you know, the, uh, we're very interested in these sorts of things in the state of Florida. Uh, where I am, we're interested in, in uh, you know, these, these uh, uh, hurricanes that are, are uh, uh, sources of, of tremendous risk here in the state of Florida. So uh, let's look at, uh, let's, let's consider, well, what's the support of capital X? Well, I got to tell you what the, what's meant by category five hurricane. So uh, there's something called a Saffir Simpson hurricane wind scale that categorizes hurricanes based on maximum wind speed. And so if the maximum wind speed is, is between 74 and 96 miles per hour, it's considered a category one hurricane. And you can see the different, different categories here. So you can, and by the way, you're not gonna be responsible for any of this uh, technical stuff with, with uh, Saffir Simpson hurricane wind scale. You, you, you won't be responsible for any of that stuff on the actuarial exam, but you, what you will be responsible for is knowing the difference between a discrete random variable and a continuous random variable. So that's kind of what the, uh, the, the, the point of the, of the uh, examples here are. Okay, but uh, in order to determine whether the random variable is discrete or continuous, we have to look at what the support of the random variable is. So in this case, I'm looking at uh, the random variable cap X being the uh, uh, the maximum wind speed in miles per hour of a the next category five hurricane that makes landfall in the state of Florida. And I see from the Saffir Simpson uh, hurricane wind scale that a category five storm has a maximum wind speed of at least 157 miles per hour. And so the support of cap X would be uh, you know, any value, it, it, the, the, the values of cap X would be from 157 upward. 
Okay, so uh, now it's obvious that you can't list out every value in that interval. And so when your support is an interval of values, that's exactly when you have a continuous random variable. So if you support uh, is a, um, um, if your support can be listed out, you have a discrete random variable. Uh, if your support is an interval of values, you have a continuous random variable. Now let's look at one more example that shows up, that's going to show up often, uh, especially later in your exam studies. Let's let cap X be the random variable representing the amount of damage in dollars for the next car accident for which a specific driver is at fault. So now what's the support of the random variable cap X? Now you may say to yourself, okay, well, uh, you're talking about the damage in dollars uh, for the next car accident, so you could have uh, your you could list those values out. You could say, well, there's one penny of damage, or two pennies of damage, or three pennies of damage, uh, and it just keeps on going. And and yes, in if you list it out that way, even though it's not a finite number of values, you can still list them out. And in that case, it would be a discrete random variable. However, what we're gonna what we're gonna assume is that those uh, well, we, we could write, we could think of it this way. We're going to assume that the random variable uh, could be, that the, the, the dollar amount of damage could be any value from zero to infinity. Um, and then when you're paying it, you're just going to pay it to the nearest penny. And so in that case, uh, we would, we're, we're going to think of going forward, we're going to think of this particular random variable as being a continuous uh, random variable. Okay, so that, again, that's going to that's going to show up quite a bit in in later uh, examples and and especially later exams also. Okay, so I'll see you in the next video.